Whilst I imagine most people who were looking for animal-based platforming antics over the last couple of weeks went the way of Sonic Frontiers, I went the way of Panic Porcupine instead, which looks like a love letter slash discount Sonic the Hedgehog. But there's a case here for this being a decent game, and I'm going to lay it out in front of you. <laughs> Panic Porcupine is like Sonic the Hedgehog the early years, as I like to call it, where it was 2D focused, but it adds on a Super Meat Boy precision platforming element on top. So not only are you going around at speed doing things, but you also have to land specific jumps around chainsaws or circular saws in a very specific and particular fashion. And there's an awful lot of wall jumping involved in Panic Porcupine 2, which isn't something that you necessarily associate with Sonic. So that's why I kind of call it Sonic the Meat Boy Hedgehog, is <laughs> basically how Panic Porcupine plays. Everything around your movement is based around momentum, which is why the Sonic reference really does hold true. And it's the speed of which you're going around the level uh, really, really determines whether or not you're going to be successful crossing all of these different death traps that are in front of you. So some of it could be around missing circular saws, it could be diving from different platforms to each other, or reaching higher platforms, um, or sometimes you're almost like a pinball, kind of going up and down, um, like nice gradient hills and then pressing the spin button to try and build up more momentum as you go back and forth so that you can get to higher platforms. All of that plays out, but the way how Panic Porcupine's levels are designed is that you have a few seconds where you're like, oh, <laughs> feeling full on full speed and it will slap like 60 chainsaws in your face and you're like, oh, all right. So it's like it teases you of going, you can go fast, you can go fast, and then it immediately bitch slaps you back down again with like some real tricky precision platforming that then when you replay this level because you've just died, makes you go, I won't be going so fast this time. That I think will be a little bit Marmite to some people because for all of the speed that Panic Porcupine gives you, it's very rare that you're actually going at full speed for more than two or three seconds at a time. And it's usually to try and get across a very specific precision platforming jump or like cannon shoot or something like that. Um, and so I feel like it's there to tease you and frustrate you rather than actually play in fully into its like, I'm going at speed throughout this entire level especially beyond world one where actually like more and more difficulty starts to come in with spikes um there's like a pinball style level there's a circus area there's an industrial place where there's just chainsaws and uh, conveyor belts going back and forth everywhere and robots kind of flying around because you spend so little time at full speed it's almost like you should train your brain to never bother doing it because it almost leaves you in a worse position when you do the level design though for Panic Porcupine outside of that I think is quite cool because there's a variety of different types of levels. You have your standard kind of 2D platformer one where you're going from left to right or right to left, but then there's also specific challenge based levels that remind me a bit of Sackboy Adventures or Little Big Planet games where it's doing something specific with like cannons or something like that. And they're very quick and like 20 second things that you can just as so long as you get the dexterity and the gameplay element like nailed down, you're fine and you blast through them. The other type of level design is where it places you in the centre of the level and gives you like five or six different chicka burbs to collect. Chicka burbs are what you need to collect in order to complete the level. So once you've collected them all, you move on. The collectible eggs are just an extra bonus for if you can collect them all for some additional kind of achievement stuff. But the chicka burbs are the mandatory things. But what they do is say it will put you in the centre of a level and it will give you kind of four offshoots and then each offshoot is like a little tiny mini challenge within your level. You can choose the order of which you want to do them um, and pick them off as you go. And this is where the flexible difficulty of Panic Porcupine comes into play. You can turn on or off an option to keep the chicka burbs that you've collected on previous goes of a level so that you just pick off those challenges and so long as you get past them all at once at some point you'll then move on but the default mode is that you have to collect all the chicka burbs in one go in one life on a level so i started off with that and then by world four i turned it off because i was getting frustrated and annoyed because you will die over and over and over and over on panic porcupine and i was quite desperate to see the end and there was a couple of levels where i felt like the difficulty curve just really ramped up a couple of the circus stage levels were really tricky and a couple of the 
World 4 like industrial area was quite tricky as well uh, and took me a good like hour or two to get through before I could then hit like the Haunted Mansion World 5. There are 50 stages in total. Uh, they do offer a good variety and they constantly drip feed new gameplay mechanics inside them, be that different things that Porcupine can do or uh, just different traps that are put in front of you that will keep you on your toes. There are boss battles at the end of each world too, and these are less around actually being able to defeat a boss. What it does is it puts loads and loads of chicka burbs in like eggshells around a boss robot or mechanic thing. And what you've got to try and do is work out how to get and traverse around the level so that you can then launch an attack and hit and free these burbs as they spin around the boss. So you never actually attack the boss full on, you're trying to work out how to free the birds that are spinning around it. This reminds me a little bit more of like a Flipnik and puzzle pinball style games because it was around timing, avoiding traps, not necessarily having to hit the enemy but working out as something was spinning around. Sometimes you'd be able to like get six of the eight eggs freed but you'd never quite time it right to get those last two so that's again where momentum and timing really comes into play and Panic Porcupine's boss levels always accentuate that. I really liked the music and the soundtrack of the game it was a good flashback to 90s chiptune style stuff and yeah although the game like the actual Porcupine itself just looks like proper discount and a bit like rough and rugged the game plays and runs smoothly, um, didn't run into any particular bugs or issues or anything like that whatsoever. And when it's going at full speed, it's able to keep up with itself, which I thought was quite good as well. I overall had a great time with Panic Porcupine. It is difficult and it gets hard, especially if you're going to go for anything around collecting egg challenges. I just abandoned that almost at the very beginning because I was never getting all of the eggs. But there's plenty of challenge here for you if you want it. Just be aware that this go this looks like it's going to be a nice, simple, fast and speedy 2D platformer. It's got teeth and it will bite. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.